five o'clock on a Wednesday, which means it's time for... Craig and Ryland's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. Welcome back to the review show. Uh, we have got five tricks that we're looking at this week, not four. Although I don't think one counts as a trick because it's the biggest pile of poop I think we've ever seen on this show. It is absolutely <laughs> terrible. I'm going to do my own rant on it. You're going to do a rant. Ryland rants. Oh my god. No, you know you're not allowed to swear. Ryland is never allowed to swear. When you are 18, then you can swear. Up Shut until up. then, no. No, 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 no. Anyway, uh, we've got one product that's absolutely terrible, and we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of other stuff as well. The first thing we're going to be looking at is uh, by uh, the combined minds of Nicholas Mavresis and David Jonathan. It's their latest trick. It's come out through P3. Penguin Magic, it's called Stroop Test. Test. Everybody's talking about this. So let's have a look at that first. So the first item we're going to be looking at is Stroop Test. Now, David Jonathan is an incredible creator of magic. Nicholas Mavresis is an incredible creator of magic. You take the two of them, you combine them together, and then you add Penguin Magic into the mix, who have been smashing out the park again and again and again, you got a pretty much guaranteed hit on your hands. And considering that this has been number one or in the top ten of Penguin since it's been released, uh, a lot of people are really enjoying this trick. Now, it is a packet trick. Um, it is almost self-working. Like, when you and I looked how this was done we almost straight away were able to do it. There's no moves as such. It's just about understanding what's happening. All you need to do is basically just deal with the cards. Yeah, that's it. Just if you can deal the cards, you can do the trick. You have to think about the presentation. That's important, isn't it? Yes. And presentation is really important with it. But if you haven't seen it, I'm going to get Ryland to perform the trick for you first of all. I get to perform it. And then once Ryland's performed it, we'll talk about what we think. Yeah. I've got Stroop Test cards here. You've got what? Stroop Test cards. What it's is... a test how fast you think. Hey, I think pretty fast, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to read the word, okay? And I'm going to put it at the bottom. Okay, how many are there? How many are there? Eight. I've got to read eight words. Yes, eight Super words. easy, barely an inconvenience. Eight, three, two, one, go. Red, blue, purple, orange, pink, green, yellow, brown. Okay. How now good am I? Yeah. But now it gets a bit harder, though. Why? Because now you've got to figure out the colour, but you're thinking of the word, though. So what have I got to say? The colour? Yeah, so that would be yellow, okay? Oh, the colour of the word. Okay, yeah. right, okay. Go. Okay, yellow. Mm, red. Brown. Green. Black. Purple. Orange. Blue. Red. How did, did I do? Did I do well? I'll give you five out of ten. Five out of ten. Five All right, I'll, ten. I'll take that. Five out of ten. Okay. Now, I need you to think of any number between one and ten. No, one and eight. Because that's how much cards we've got. Between one and eight? Yeah. Okay. Four. Four, okay? Yeah? Yeah. So, and I'm going to put that to the bottom and count four. So, that's one. That's two. That's three. And there's number four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? okay. Now, you got, now, you got green there. We're focusing on that. You're focusing on the colour? Yeah. Okay, so, right, so that would have been black. and Right, okay, I've got it, okay. Yeah. So, so, and I knew you would pick that colour, though. I don't believe you. Well, look, literally, I knew you would. Green. Now, you might be thinking, well, is there, is there all different colours? So that would yeah, be black, but yeah, no, yeah. that would be purple. No, that would be orange. No, that would be brown. No, that would be yellow. No, that would be blue. No, that would be purple. No, brown. No. And that would be red on me. I knew that. I knew. They're all green. Yeah, they're all green. That's crazy. Yeah. How'd you do that? Not telling me. So that is Stroop Test. That was a really good performance, right? Like I said, uh, David Jonathan, Nicholas Mavresis. First thing I want to say is I really like the hook to this trick. I love the idea of, you know, th th I mean, the Stroop Test is an actual thing. And I love the idea of having this test that people need to to do and, and it kind of engages people right from the beginning before you even start doing any magic people are engaged in what you're doing so the, the hook and the premise for the trick i think is great would you agree with me yeah yeah i think it's a great hook um i also love the idea of and uh 
you know, David Jonathan does this in his performance. He starts off by saying this is a cognitive test. Uh, and then afterwards, when he's just about to show the revelation, he goes, well, it's not a cognitive test. It's actually a psychological test. And I influenced you to make this decision. Let me prove it to you. Now, the download is done by uh, Dan Harlan, who is an incredible performer. And he explains things very, very clearly. You've also got a, a second explanation on there and performance over Zoom by David Jonathan. This would work brilliantly for Zoom and virtual shows, but it's also great for close-up. A um, few positives about this. First of all, everything's examinable at the end, isn't it? Yeah. Everything's examinable at the end. Uh, there's a couple of different outcomes, but with both outcomes, everything's examinable. Um, it's very easy to do. No table is required. It's an instant reset. In that regard, it is super commercial. Now, I was watching the Prop Dog show the other day. And the guys on Prop Dog didn't like this. They said that, the, I can't remember exactly what they said, but it was something along the lines of the premise was great, but the payoff wasn't so good. Um, What's the payoff? You know, in other words, the, the kind of the magical impact on the audience, how impactful the magic was. And I was speaking to my friend Nemid Phoenix. You know, me and Nem did that gig together the other day, that yeah. illusion show. And I, uh, I showed him this when I was at the gig. And again, he said the same thing. He said, oh, I didn't think that was a very impactful finish. So maybe it's just me, but I really like this. I think this is really good. Um, I think that there's one ending that's better than the other ending. There's two ways that this can go, isn't there? There's two ways that this can go. I think the way that it went when you performed it to me is the best outcome. When you're turning all the cards over and you've got green, green, green. I think that's incredible. The other method, the other way of it ending works well as well. But I don't think it's as good as the ending you just saw Ryland do. Luckily, David Jonathan talks on the download about how to engineer it so that sort of 80, 90 percent of the time you'll get the outcome that you just saw Ryland, uh, Ryland do. What do you think about it? You've performed it. You've, I, I want to know what you think. What do you think of it? I, I, I think it's really good. Why do you like it so much? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you just like it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um... I, I don't know. It's, let's be honest. It's not going to set the world on fire. It's not going to be that trick that just brings the house down. We it's, have got one of them. Yeah, we have got one of them. It's not going to be the finale to your to your close up act. It's just not. Um, but it's a great piece to put in. It takes up virtually no pocket space. It could even fit inside a wallet, and you can take it out. You can do it anytime, anywhere. It's it's it it it's great, and I think if you're doing a mentalism set and you throw this in there, I think this is this is this is really. I I just think it works. I I disagree with it not being impactful. I think it's as impactful as any prediction routine out there. I mean, think about it from a from an audience's point of view. They can name any number, and they really can name any number. There's no force on that number, is there? Like they can name any number. You then deal to that number. You're not doing second dealing or, or double dealing or anything like that. If they say six, you deal to six. If they say four, you deal to four. If they say one, you deal to one. And, and when you do, the card there is the card that you work with. There is no force in that regard. And yet you're able to show that you knew exactly what they would do right from the very beginning. So I really like it. I think it's going to get... Um, it's going to get 85% from me. I don't think it's the strongest trick in the world, but I think that it absolutely deserves a place in everyone's sort of repertoire. And if you're building sort of a close-up mentalism set or you're building a set where you're going to have some mental magic, this is a great in to some other routines because it's 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 very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very easy to do. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stress about it. You can kind of do this as kind of a test, a Stroop test, and you can kind of do, do this and then go, well, I think I've got you sorted psychologically now. I think I'm on the same wavelength. Let's try this. And then you do something that's even more impactful. Um, and, and in that respect, I think it's a really good opener. It's very quick. I was speaking to Steve Deller about this. You know, Steve? I was speaking to Steve the other day. And uh, he said the problem with mentalism is there's not that many openers. And Steve, a lot of the time, will open with the invisible deck because it's so quick. It's like, name a card, boom, it's the only one turned over in the deck. This is kind of a very similar feel. You know, name a number, boom, I knew you were going to pick that colour. Genuinely, let me show you. So yeah, I, I think it's good. It's getting eighty-five percent from me. What about you? Um, eight, ninety-five. Ninety-five percent. Ninety-five percent from Ryland. Eighty-five percent from me. Uh, it's not very expensive. Um, and not very expensive. Not very expensive, and it works really well. Yeah. So uh, yeah. It works very well. Recommended. Definitely. 
Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a review of Drop Card, which is by Penguin Magic, or P3, and it's by Chris Rawlings. And if you don't know Chris Rawlings, he's an incredible mentalist uh, based in the UK, and uh, he's released some fantastic ebooks and magic over the years and uh, some mentalism. And this is, this is uh, a new item by him. I think it got uh, filmed a little while ago, but it's only just been released. And uh, we're doing something here that we don't normally do on the review show, in that Ryland has never seen this, have you? You don't even know what this is. You haven't watched the download. And the reason is, Ryland likes to think that he doesn't get fooled very often these days, don't you? Mm -hmm. Like, because you see a lot of magic, you very rarely get fooled. I think that this is going to fool you. I think that this trick is going to fool you. So I'm going to perform this to you for the very first time. You don't know how it works. And I want you to be honest and tell me if it fooled you. Is that deal? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, Ryan, I'm going to show you something called Drop Card, and I think this could very possibly fool the pants off you. Are you wearing pants? Uh, yes. Not for much longer, because I'm going to fool the pants off you. This is a deck of playing cards, right, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah? Um, now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the most amazing trick that you've ever seen. Are you ready to see the most amazing trick that you've ever seen? Yeah. It's going to start off with you picking a card, so I'm going to do this in a super fair way. Uh, just say stop. There, are you sure? Yeah. Do you want the bottom card or the top card? Uh, let's say top card. That one there? Yeah. Yeah, sure? Yeah. Have a look at the card, remember, don't forget it. Show everyone, do not show me, I cheat for a living. Okay? Yes. And you're gonna put it back, just say stop. Stop. There, pop it back, and we're gonna uh, leave, it, leave it in there. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Lost in the deck. That, I couldn't get fairer than that, could I? No, no, no. Now, I have to try and find your card. And this trick's all about choices. You're about to make another choice right now, Ryland. Okay. Would you like me to do this? Would you like to see a good trick or a miracle? A good trick. A, just a good trick? Yeah. Or well, maybe a miracle. Which one? Uh, Let's do a miracle. Yeah. A miracle would be you finding your card yourself. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Okay. I'm going to spread the cards out on the table. Now, you're going to make all the choices here. Okay. We're going to eliminate some of the cards. You're going to touch somewhere in the spread. Wherever you touch, all the cards to the left of that, I'm going to eliminate. We're going to get rid of. But I want to be left with at least two-thirds of the deck. So don't <laughs> do that because I'll be left with like four cards. So where do you want to, uh, where do you want to, where do you want to eliminate cards? That one there. Are you sure? Yes. Are you happy at that point right there? Yes? Yes. So hopefully, if I've done this right, it means that your card isn't here but we'll soon find out if i've done it right or not uh because we're going to go again okay yeah um what we're going to do this time is we're going to do the same thing uh, but this time you can touch anywhere you want to and again whichever is to the left then we're going to eliminate there, there. which one, that one. I don't want to. so we're going to get rid of all of these yes yes every single leaving just these is that right yeah okay uh, we'll do this, uh, we'll do this again, we'll do this again, touch, you sure? Yeah. Okay, we get rid of all of these, uh, it leaves us with, to, to, to be honest, not many cards, it leaves us with a few, let's do this again, we'll do this, uh, there's not really enough cards, we'll try it one more time, just... okay, yeah, you sure? Yeah, so you want to eliminate the queen, the four and all of these cards, yeah? Yeah. Uh, doesn't really need us. We haven't got enough left really to do this again. So I tell you, well, maybe we'll try it one more time. Um, one more, one more touch. Half the cards. You you want to get rid of these? Yes. Right here. Yes. Yes. Okay. Interesting. How do you think you're doing? Good. Think you're doing okay? Yeah. Mm, maybe. Not. Uh, let's do this. See if I can influence you. Do you feel influenced? Let's try. What I want you to do is um, touch one card. You sure? Yeah. Are you positive? Yeah. That's the card you want, yes? Yes. Do you want to change your mind? No. Okay. So we get rid of these, yes? Yes. And this is the one you want. Yes. And you eliminated all of the cards, one by one, with no wordplay, you eliminated every single card. You were left with one card and one card only. For the first yeah. time, what was the name for your card? Five of Diamonds. Turn it over. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, you fool. Yes. Boom. No way, how the hell does that work? How <laughs> does it work? You fool, aren't you? Yeah. Do you have any idea how it works? No. Because seriously. Is it easy? 
Is it easy? It's completely self-working. Can I do it straight away? How, how hard is it? To Once I told you how to do this, you could do this within about 15 minutes. No way. Yeah, seriously. The download is half an hour long and it's Chris explaining the concept. Basically, right, you know this drop card? This is something that apparently, according to the download, Chris has been working on for years. He's written books on this concept and the whole drop card... Oh, my boring you? The whole drop card concept is the whole idea of a spectator finding their own card in the deck. And he's got lots of different methods of doing this. How this is the work, newest no. method. I can't tell you how it works <laughs> now. Work? I can tell you when the camera stopped rolling. I can't tell you now. Tell me. Um, but it is very easy to do. You could do this straight away. Um, here's, here's the thing. You need a table because you need to spread the cards out on the table. Although, once you understand how the method works, I think you could probably adapt it spread to be able to be hand. done in the hands. Yeah, but you'd still need to eliminate spread the cards down somewhere. Um, so you wouldn't need it a full table. Hmm. It's, um, but yeah, I mean, it, what you just saw there, that's how the effect plays every single time. There's a certain element of jazzing to this routine. And what I mean by jazzing is what like you do with a mem deck, where somebody names a card and you kind of do different stuff depending on uh, the cards. Oh, yeah, so, my promises. Yeah, like my promises, I think. So you've got a certain amount of jazzing in this, in that sometimes... Uh, the method uh, or the, the the way it looks to the audience will be slightly different every single time. You'll still get, you'll always get, the effect is they pick a card and they always end up eliminating every single card and the one card that they don't eliminate is their card. But how you get there changes slightly every single time. Uh, however, it's all completely self-working. So it's no, you know, like with a mem deck, if they name the d d the Queen of Hearts, for example, you might cut and then you can look and you're three cards away. So now you've got to think, okay, am I going to do a slip cut and double lift? And you kind of have to think through it. It's nothing like that. It's it's all completely self-working, but you do have to kind of think on your feet slightly. Um, but it's it's very easy to do. It really is genuinely very easy. If I showed you how to do it, you could do it almost immediately. Do you have any c other questions about this? Could you do it on stage? Could you do it on stage? Well, yeah, I mean, but sure. Parlour, this would be great. Uh, d d close, up? close up, this would be great. Um, it's it's just a really, really good Work trick. Around. You could do it. You do need a table or you need something because when you're eliminating the cards, you need to put them down somewhere. I suppose. Hey, no, no, you wouldn't want to put them in the spectator's hand. What? You could because not everything is examinable. But that's not an issue. And I'll tell you how I know that's not an issue, because I've just done this on you, and you never even thought about asking about examinability, did you? Yeah. And the reason you never thought about exam asking about examinability is because it's all so clean. You're touching any way you want to. I'm showing you the cards. I'm putting them to one side. So you don't feel that there's anything untoward with this deck, but the bottom line is the cards that I'm putting to one side, not all of them can be examined. A lot of them can, but not all of them can. So I suppose if you were going to do it in the spectator's hand, you could spread the cards out. And the cards that they eliminate, you could just put them away in your pocket, put them away in the card box. That would work. Um, so I suppose you could routine it to do it walk around. Um, but it's a really easy trick. If you want something, again, you know, it's mentalism, but it's also mental magic in that um, if you're a magician, it will work really, really well. If you're a mentalist, it will work really, really well. It's just a great concept. And to be honest, um, this drop card concept of the spectator finding their own card you can actually take what Chris goes through on the download here and you could apply it in so many other directions. I think this is really cool. I'm going to give this 90%. I think this is great. Uh, what do you think? I think it's really good. So what are you going to give it? You're completely fooled. Um, 100%. You're going to give it 100%. Absolutely. I think it's uh, I think it's great. So Ryland gives it 100%. I'm going to give it 90%. Highly recommended. Very easy to do. Nothing to break. Um, if you ever lose the deck, it's very easily uh, sort of replaceable without having to buy another one. Yeah, good. Well done, Chris Wallace. And this next trick is Zoltar Speaks by Peter Nardi, it's Alakazam Magic. And you love Alakazam, don't you? Yes. So this is, we already know what this is going to get from you. We, we, we already know, but we'll talk about it first, if that's yeah. okay. So this is the latest trick by Peter Nardi, like Ryland said. And the story that Pete talks about on the tutorial, it's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, he talks about how when he did Mix and Mingle, he used to use an invisible deck as his opener. And then when he started doing banquets, he also started incorporating the invisible deck into his banquet set. So he needed a new opener for his Mix and Mingle set. And this is what he came up with. 
Um, and what it is, is it's a very simple prediction of a card. And it is really, really simple. Yeah. Um, but it's a way of actually predicting a card that the spectator names, and they have a free choice of any card, don't they? I mean, there's no force at all. They have a free choice of any card, and you can predict the card that they name. Now, you have been performing this everywhere. You've been showing it to everybody who will, who will listen and who will yeah. watch. Are you going to perform this to everybody at home? Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Cool. So we'll do a performance, and then after we've done the performance, we'll talk about it. Cool? Yeah. yeah. Do you know the film Big? Yes. Like, I told you about Big, we watched it together. Yeah. The piano yeah. scene in the toy store, yeah. where they're playing the piano on the floor. Wicked moment. Yeah, and you, and you remember Zolto, the machine, where, the, where, the, where he goes up to this machine and wishes he was big, and the next morning he wishes he turns up as big. When would, he you like, up. would you like to be big? Nah, well, I don't know. No? Well, this is called Zolto Speaks. Okay. Okay, now, Zolto Speaks... He says, think of a card. What does he think of that? Oh, yeah, okay, think, think of, a, of card. a card. You want me to think of a card? Yeah. Okay, got it. Not the Joker, he says. Okay, not the Joker. Not the Joker. Yeah. Name your card. Hmm? Name your card, he says. Oh, name your card. Okay, the Five of Diamonds. Five of Diamonds. And he says, I knew you would say that. Okay. No, really. And he did. You. He knew that I would pick the Five of Diamonds. Yes, he did. Don't believe you. Look, he did. He really did. Look, I'll show you. Okay. I'll show you. Five of diamonds is going to be in this somewhere. Here. Yeah? You mm -hmm. see it? Yeah, I see it, yeah. You see it? Okay. You see it? Yeah, yeah, I see it, yeah. Okay, now all these cards are bicycle cards. Yeah, they are, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see bicycle. that. Yeah? Yeah? Now, he, he said he knew you would pick that card. How? Well, he signed these cards. By putting pictures on it. He painted the car all white and then put a picture on it. There you go. The only card with Zoltar on it is the Five of Diamonds. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. So let me ask you a few questions about that, right? Because that was a really good performance. Let me ask you a few questions. First of all, how easy is the trick? Easy. It is really easy, isn't it? I mean, literally, if you can dribble a deck of cards, you can do the trick. In fact, weirdly, and I didn't even know this, you can, you, up until you learnt this trick, you couldn't dribble a deck of cards, could you? You'd never taught or learnt how to dribble a deck of cards. It's just never something you needed to know. So you had to learn how to dribble a deck of cards to do this trick. Not um, good yes, he's, he, he's practising his dribble. Um, if you've been in card magic for 0 0.2 seconds and you can dribble a pack of cards, that's all you need to do. But outside of dribbling the deck, is there anything else that you need? That's kind of it, isn't it? Uh, let me just think this through. Yeah, yeah. Too, yeah. And, presentation, but yeah. The hook line is really cool because you get to talk about the film Big and you love Big. You've watched it a couple of times now. Uh, and everybody, uh, Big is one of those iconic movies that if you're eight years old, you've probably seen it. If you're 45 years old, you've probably seen it. It's just one of those films that... Probably I've definitely seen it. Yeah, it's 95% you've probably seen it if you're 45 years old. Yeah, so most people have seen it and they, they know what Zoltar is. In fact, I, I do a lot of work for a company um, it's like an events company and they book me out as a magician an awful lot and they actually at their events they always supply a Zoltar machine which is really cool they've got a Zoltar machine that they actually uh, so a lot of the weddings that I go to you know when you walk in right next to the photo booth there's a Zoltar machine from Big it's really cool uh, but anyway so does it do anything? well it does it's never turned me big or granted any of my wishes but it does what the, the thing in the film does so you you press a button and you it gives you uh, a little card that you can keep that says wish granted on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, did, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is really strong in that they can name any card. Uh, when I first saw this, I'll be honest, I was like, well, that's really simple, isn't it? I can think of a hundred different ways of doing this with sleight of hand. I can think of a hundred different ways exactly. of doing this with sleight of hand. I can think of a whole bunch of ways of accomplishing this same trick without actually needing to use a gimmick deck. But because you're using a gimmick deck, it really does allow a lot of freedom of choice because it genuinely is a free choice. And, and all the methods I was thinking of with sleight of hand, I can't really get them to have a free choice of card. And if I do give them to have a free choice of card, they wouldn't eventually be able to examine that card. And, and, and with this, I mean, the whole idea is, let's say they say the, I don't know, the, the four of spades. 
Oh, there you go, four of spades. You know, it is literally this clean. You put that into their hand, you show the rest of the deck, they see the rest of the deck, and then immediately you just turn that card around and it's the only one with Zoltar on. It's an incredibly strong moment, it really is. And it accomplishes what Pete wanted to do, which was have a really strong opener um, that's over in a few seconds that is very impactful. And it is, it is very impactful. When they I have- did like, I did like this thing where I said Zoltar painted himself. Yeah, yeah, I remember you did that earlier on, didn't you? Yeah. And I love the fact that you put this card in the hand. Now, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. This deck can't be examined. The card in their hand can be examined, but the deck can't be examined. I don't think that's too much of an issue, though, because the way that this is done, it's a very quick opener. So it would literally be a case of, right, okay, you can name any card, you name the four of spades. You could have picked any one of these, but you picked the four of spades. And Zoltar knew you'd pick that card because it actually has a picture of Zoltar on it. Turn it around, have a look at that. That's incredible. Well, guys, now I know that we're on the same wavelength. We're going to try something else now, okay? We're going to do something else. Let me just put those away. Let me do this. And you're kind of into something else, and you're not really giving people a chance to even ask to examine everything. And also, because the card that they named is the one in the hand, um, I, I don't think that's an issue either. I won't know until I go out and work this. And I am going to work this because I think, like I said, I do a lot of weddings where there is a Zoltar machine. So it absolutely makes sense to bring is this out. actually? Have you been to like... Like tons of them. You know, you know John and Rachel, who I, I do a lot of work for. Yeah, John yeah. Smith. Yeah? yeah, Like they have their own Zoltar machine and they send it out all the time. So, like, I'm always at events where there's one of these Zoltar machines. I see it all the time. Um, but even if I wasn't at an event with a Zoltar machine, I still think this is a really cool premise. I really like the idea of this. I think it's really good. Um, yeah, as I say, there's going to be people watching this and they're going to go, why should I carry a deck of cards around for this one moment of magic? And then the next question is, well, why should you carry an invisible deck around? You know, I mean, that's the same thing. You know, it's a, it's a very quick moment. You want to name the Seven of Diamonds? Okay, the Seven of Diamonds is the only one turned over in this deck. Um, uh, sorry, there's one card turned over in this deck, and it's the Seven of Diamonds. Boom. It's not examinable. You've got that big moment, and then you put the deck away, and we all know that the Invisible Deck is capable of a lot more than that one-trick pony. And it's the same with this. I think there's a lot more you could do with this. Uh, I really do. I really like it. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did, but I do. I think this would make a really good opener. I'm going to go and work this and I'm going to get some live footage of it because I am working on um, kind of a review show where I take the tricks that I've reviewed and I kind of go back to them and look at what they're like in the real world. And, and I think more videos. Yeah, more videos. More new videos that you want to do. Yeah, more new videos. Will, will it now turn into 27? No, 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 no. This will be like a review show special. It's going to be oh. a one-off thing. I'm not going to do this every week. It'll be insane. No, just uh, like a one-off video uh, uh, every so often. I'm going to re-look at the stuff that we've actually looked at on this show. And Take then it out. that will become every week. No, it that's won't. what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so everything you've done, one like, special video goes every week. Like you do a new video and you say you're going to do it occasionally and it happens every week. <laughs> are you telling me off or are you just proud of me? Which one is it? Both. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to give this? You know. I can't. Oh, it's Alakazam. It's 120%, right? Yeah. So it's 120% from Ryland. How, gonna... how could you even say? Sorry, how did I even forget that for a second? 120% from Ryland. I'm going to give this 90 three percent i think this is a great opener 93 percent from me uh if you're looking for a really super commercial thing that's over very very quickly that has the same power of the invisible deck but in a completely different way this is what you want to get highly recommended okay so next up we have the vanishing by himitsu magic and do you remember at the very beginning of the show we said that uh, there was one trick that was truly one of the most terrible tricks we've ever seen of all time that would be this one this is dreadful. Like, this is so bad, we're not actually going to perform it. Because we've tried, yeah. and we can't make it look good. And that's not because, like, he's incompetent or I'm incompetent. It's just that unless we set the camera up 15 miles down the road and you saw us as a pin dock, that's probably the only way this would work. This would not Fool a blind monkey. It seriously. I have no idea what in the blue hell 
um, Himitsu Magic were thinking about when they released this. And this has actually offended you, you hasn't it? You can see the invisible string. <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, but it's not string, but yes, you can. Uh, basically, what you have here is you have a vanishing card. You have a card that vanishes. That's basically the effect. And, you, and if you haven't got something, you're going to need to spend some money. A black top. And, and, uh, and don't even buy the black top. Don't buy it because you can see this thing. He's tried it with just a plain laptop. He's got lots of them. He's tried it. He's tried it. Keep going. And you can literally see it. You can still see it. We tried it even further away, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We tried it even further away. And you could still see the string. And it's a really badly made gimmick. And also the download. I want to say something about the download. <laughs> They talk in Japanese, and the thing at the bottom is Japanese, so you can't understand what they're saying either. <laughs> Gotta make that point, yeah. So you know, like, when <laughs> this really annoyed you, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it annoyed me. <laughs> you know when you, like, you get a, a, a trick, and it's all done to music, uh, because the person who's delivering the instructions maybe doesn't speak English or whatever, and that's fair enough, and then they put uh, written English instructions at the bottom. Uh, this is hilarious because it's like, it's got, the title of the YouTube video is uh, The Vanishing English Instructions. And it's somebody talking uh, talking Japanese or whatever, which is absolutely fine. And there's music playing over the top. But then the, the, the subtitles that they put at the bottom. It's Jap Japanese. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what's the point? We can't understand the thing that's going on in it. It's only a four minute download. It's only a four minute download. Which is lucky. He could understand it because he was just watching the movies. And stuff. Yeah, but, but two minutes of that is how to place the gimmick if it breaks. Although <laughs> I can't really follow how the how that two minutes works because I can't really understand what they're doing because it, it doesn't make sense. The other two minutes is is explaining the trick. And it's literally, this is the thing. This is what you do. One, ca one camera angle, two camera. There's a million questions I've got about this. The first question is why, to be perfectly honest. Um, but why, the second question, yeah, the second question is like, like, uh, without giving too much away about how the gimmick works, you have to put your thumb into a particular point. It's, now, it's just, the size of the thumb. The size of the thumb has to be a baby thumb, by the way. Thea's thumb fit in it. We checked, checked here. We got Thea. Your thumb was too big. <laughs> His thumb was too. Big. We got Thea over. Her thumb fitted, but she couldn't do the thumb. Like it's it it. It's like, that's a thumb. You need to make it big enough for a person's thumb to fit. My pinky finger wouldn't fit in it. <laughs> My pinky finger could. Your pinky... My thumb could. <laughs> right, right. And, and that's how you're holding control of the gimmick. So even if I wanted to try and perform it, I couldn't because the gimmick's not fit for purpose. This is stupid. Also, it looks terrible. And, and what's the point? It's like a vanishing card. Uh, the card vanishes, but you still end up with you having to palm a card. It's just really bad. It's just dreadful. There is no redeeming qualities to this whatsoever. It is awful. It'll break in two minutes. It wouldn't fool a blind monkey. It doesn't work. And and maybe... Diamonds could see it from, I don't know, if you're like a mile away, you could still see it. And here's the thing. Maybe, just maybe, we're stupid. Maybe we're stupid, and this is the best trick in the world, and we just can't see it. We wouldn't know because it's a four-minute download. So you haven't actually, and two minutes of those is how to fix the gimmick. So you haven't discussed how to make this work, how to deal with angles, how to deal with black art, because it is black art. None of this stuff you've dealt with, you've literally just gone, here's a gimmick, here's a trick, this is what you do, thanks very much, this is how you fix it. By the way, couldn't be bothered doing English subtitles, move on. Like, that's literally all it is. This gets, I said, I did an honest trailer the other day, and I put up honest uh, jade rings. Uh, Baby Jade Rings, and I said that was the worst trick I've ever seen in my entire career. Uh -uh. This is the worst trick that I have ever seen in my life. This gets minus 1,000% from me. This is dreadful. Minus Dubai. infinity. Minus <laughs> infinity. Minus infinity and one. <laughs> one. Minus infinity squared plus one. You win. <laughs> Don't buy this. This is terrible. Get the bin. We haven't done the bin in a while. Have you got the bin? Do you know where the bin, the bin is? Oh, you got the bin. Did you get the bin for this? Yes. Oh, great. Uh, put it in the bin. There you go. This is... This is. Oh, you wanted to do that yourself. There you go. <laughs> terrible trick. Do not buy. It's total trash. Get it away. Just as a bit of a side note, <laughs> before we were going into the next and final review, 
we, we were looking at the gimmick thinking, well, maybe, maybe it's us. Let's have another look at it first. And, and the part where you put your thumb broke away. Broke like, away straight Now, away. we don't know how to fix it because we just went and checked the download. <laughs> and the download for this trick, right? The, the download for this trick only explains how to fix the thread, not f fix if the thumb thing comes off. Now, I've got the thumb thing here. We've now had a look at it. And, and it's come away. It is literally just gaffer tape, so I can see why it's come away. And underneath, the gimmick is laid out of a can lid. <laughs> it's a can of pop. It, they've snapped the thing off a can of pop, and that's the gimmick right there. That's the gimmick. Literally, that the, is that? Is that? That's, that's, exa there? that's your gimmick right there. That's, that's your gimmick. gimmick. It's a can lid. It's a can lid. <laughs> like, like, get some freaking quality control. This is just... And throw it back in the bin. Put it back in the bin. This is just... This just... is just terrible. <laughs> so the final review we have today is Everyday Gaffs Volume 1 by Ozzy fans. Luke uh, Ozzy. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it's better than a trash can lid... Well, a <coughs> lid gimmick. It's better than that. Way better than that. It is better than that. Uh, what this is, this is, uh, we've spoke about Ozzy fans before. We spoke about Luz Ozlin, uh, Luke Oslin before. Very creative guy, super creative guy. Very young, very talented. Just a really creative guy. He's come up with this. This is priced really well. This is £10. Uh, and it comes with a download. We'll talk about the download in a bit. But what it is, what Luke's done, is he's taken some common card gaffes and built them into reward cards that you would get in any in somewhere like Starbucks or somewhere like uh, KFC. And, um, you know, every, everybody these days talks about their everyday carry, what you have with you when you leave the house that doesn't look like a magic trick. It looks kind of organic. This is perfect for that. Now, I'm going to perform a couple of routines for you in a second. But before I do, let me show you the gaffes that you get for this. So, um, uh, because there is an issue, and I will talk about the issue in a bit. So first of all, there's two types of gaffes. One type is made up out of what looks like KFC reward cards. And on one side, it's got six chicken legs. On the other side, it's got and the... And one's on um, fire. Yeah, it's got the KFC reward, like the KFC logo. So you get two regular KFC cards, and then you get two gaffed KFC cards. The first one has got a whole bunch of chicken legs at the bottom of the card. The other one has that kind of Dan Harlan Vortex style printing on it where it looks like it's swirled round and round and round. The Starbucks cards, you have, um, I haven't got them all here actually, but it doesn't matter. There's, there's some up at the house. You get three regular cards, and I've only got two of the regular cards here, but you get three regular cards. You also get um, one of these, which is kind of misprinted. So it's got the Starbucks logo, but it's kind of stretched off to one side. So the whole idea is that you can bring it out and you can look like you're stretching the logo. Uh, you also get one where the Starbucks has changed oh, into I the five clubs. Oh, I have seen one. I have seen one. It's like a swirled. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a swirly one. There's a swirly Starbucks one. And then as well as like the KFC one. And then there's like a out of focus Starbucks card, What's which that? is it, it looks like it's uh, out of focus on a camera. Uh, it's up at the house, but it looks like it's out of focus on a camera. So when you look at it, it looks, it's all f fuzzy and blurry. If you've ever seen any sort of gaff decks, you'll have seen a card I like that. I think I've actually house. seen that, actually. Mm -hmm. So you've got all of these cards, and then you've got like a, uh, I think it's like a 10-minute download from Luke talking about how these cards work and what they do. It is a lot better. Then you're still not going to you're not going to forget about that for a long time, are you? Now I there is a there is an issue about this, and let me explain what the issue is with this. The issue is what Luke has done here is he's had the cards prepared and he's had the cards made and had the cards printed, and you get them in this little envelope and you get a download thing teach, telling you where the uh, where the tutorial is. I personally think that the tutorial does not go into enough. Because basically, what he does is he just very briefly explains what each of these cards are. And then he basically, his solution towards effecting any of these changes is by using a snap change. So pretty much every single time he explains a trick, he's like, okay, what I would do with this one is I would do a snap change. Now, I have two issues with that. One, the snap change isn't perfect. for It's great for social media which is what Luke works with. Luke works a lot with social media. 
Snap change, great for social media, absolutely great. For the real world, you don't really, I, I don't know any gigging magician that uses the snap change on a regular basis because it's very angly and there's other changes that can accomplish the same thing that look just as good. Now you could say, yes, Craig, but Luke has done these for social media. That's his thing. His thing is social media. So there's no problem with the snap change. And I would agree with you other than the fact that Luke has created these specifically as everyday gaps. That's the name of the trick. This everyday is, gaps. This is designed to be carried around with yeah. you and done out and about, which is, is why... easy, by the way. Yeah, well, I'm going to get into that i'm kind of slowly making my point on this now that's why they've been made to look like kfc cards and starbucks cards because you can slip them in your wallet and you can do it anytime anywhere but the tutorials and the explanations don't go into enough depth it's either the snap change or it's bring the card out like this and just hide the logo and then just rub and have it change I think Luke should have spent half an hour, 45 minutes, if he's going to sell these, I think he should have gone more in depth as to how you can actually use these. Not as much as the 1914 project. Not as much as the 1914 project, no. Well, but, any 1914 project, they're like two hours or something, maybe even longer. Yeah. Three to four hours. They are very long, yes. Um, but I still think it should have gone into more depth because there's going to be people buying these that like the idea that maybe don't do the snap change. And Luke's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, here's an idea. Why don't you do this? Here's an idea. Why don't you do that? But he doesn't explain it. And he's, uh, he goes, oh, you can look up this on YouTube. If you want to learn how to do this move, look it up on YouTube. If you want to learn how to do this move, yeah, look it up on YouTube, which is fine because you can probably find the yeah, way of doing it on Luke. Why but, but don't you teach it? It's better. Exactly. Boom. Totally agree with you. It is better. And also, when you go on YouTube, there's going to be a load of videos out there that don't teach it properly. Um, yes. And you might end up selling this to somebody who doesn't know how to do something and then goes and finds a video and learns how to do it incorrectly. And then that's a rabbit warren we don't really want to go down. Um, so yeah. that's my issue with it. Um, the quality of the gaffes are good. The creative thinking behind them is really good. I've put my thinking cap on for just a few minutes, just, well, more than a few minutes, for probably a day or two. And I've come up with like, That's not maybe... even near a few minutes. Yeah, no, I'm being, I'm being an idiot. And uh, <laughs> there's nine or ten routines that I've come up with with these. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of them. So the first one is how I'm planning on using the KFC card. So I like the idea of routining the two KFC gaffs together. So starting with the chicken one where the chicken falls down and then going into the swirly one. I like that idea. Um, so let me show you how I do the KFC card first of all. Let me, uh, let me do a performance of that. Yeah, okay. Okay, right. Your favourite place to eat in the whole world is KFC, isn't it? Yes. KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Fringer Licking Good. This is a rewards card. You get these in KFC. The idea is that you get six chicken legs there, yeah? Yeah. And the idea is that when they stick a sticker over each one or they, they sign each one, and when you've got all of them done, you get a free chicken. You get a free, uh, I think it's a free chicken burger or something. I want to show you something because I'm going to show you a trick. Do you see the uh, the six chicken there? Yeah. I'm going to try and move them. Watch this. If I just rub, I can actually move the chicken all Whoa. down to one end, which is pretty crazy. I mean, don't you think that's pretty nuts? Yeah. But we're going to try and move them back. Hold your hand out for me. There you go. Palm up. And put your other hand on top so I can't get to it. Now watch this. All I have to do is snap. Did you feel it happen? No. Lift up your hand and have a look. Because now the chicken is back where it came from. Now that's pretty good, right? Yeah. But would you like to see a big finish? Because every trick yeah. needs a big finish. Watch this. Do you see the, see the Colonel there? That's Colonel yeah. Sanders who invented KFC. Watch this. I'm going to try and do something completely impossible. If I just do this... And just go round and round and round like this. Look at that. What I can do is I can take the card, not only on that side, but that side. I can make it all twirly and whirly and you can examine everything. Can I keep this? Yeah, if you want it. So that's the KFC one. I like the idea of having the two cards together inside the wallet. You bring them out, you do the change, you put it in their hands, and that gives you the misdirection to... Yeah, I mean, you get, uh, to do it the way I just did it there, so you're going to need to do a side steal. Yeah, you're going to need to do a side steal, so you're going to need to add some Palmer card. But I to could be probably honest, Palmer size them like that, but hang on, let me try. Yeah, you can Palm that. Yeah, I can Palm that. You can Palm that, really easily. But, I mean, Luke has got a yeah, point. You don't that. always have to have... Like, if you bring out a card like this, they're going to think it's a Starbucks card. You don't need to show them the logo. People are custom to that so if you then just do this 
and change it into the name of a playing card. Um, and, and But that's an example. He doesn't teach you a force. He just says, yeah, use a crosscut force. You can find out how to do a crosscut force on the uh, on the internet. Oh, um, the, uh, <laughs> calm down. Um, the other one, uh, it, this is another example. If you bring out a card like this and they see Starbucks, you don't really need to do a switch. Luke's right. And then you've got that wonderful moment that you can give out to people. But I do think and it would have been worthwhile. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't want to give the card away stuff. because, <laughs> you know, you could, you then you can't do it again. Yeah. It's not like the, you've got extras. Um, he should do extras now. Maybe he can do a refill pack. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, but again, I like the Five of Clubs Starbucks card. I, like I think that that's really good. I, like um, I have a business card transposition, a multi-phase business card transposition routine where a business card changes places with a playing card. And it's like a four or five phase routine. Uh, what I've done is I've taken the first phase of that and combined it with the Starbucks card to have like a transposition between the five of clubs and the and the Starbucks card and then go into the actual uh, color change on the Starbucks card. Let me show you and you'll see what I mean. Have, let's have a look at that right now. So, right, do you know what this is? Starbucks. Very good. We're gonna do a trick with a Starbucks card and also with a deck of playing cards, okay? Yeah. And you can see they're all there. You can see they're all different, 52 playing cards, yeah? Yeah. Um, so we're going to have you pick a playing card. doesn't matter whether I see it. I'm allowed to see it. So as I ruffle down, just say stop. Stop. Right there. You happy? Yeah. We'll take the card that you stopped on. doesn't really matter what the card is. We've got the five of clubs. Are you happy with the five of clubs? Yeah. If you're happy, I'm happy. So the idea is very simple. I'm going to take the five of clubs, pop it inside the, uh, the card box. We'll get back to it in a minute, okay? Yeah. Now, as well as that, I also need another couple of cards. I'm going to take the two black kings so we're going to take the king of clubs and the king of spades hands off the table so i've got the two black kings we'll put the rest of the deck to one side for a minute okay so we've got the king of spades that's that one we've got the king of clubs that's that one and we've got this starbucks card and in here we've got the card can you remember what it was the five of clubs very good now watch this starbucks card i'm going to pop it right there in between the two kings making some sort of weird sort of card starbucks sandwich yeah? yeah now watch this this happens on three one two three did you see it happen no see now over here i've got the five of clubs the five of clubs was over here now in between the two kings i've got the five of clubs which is pretty cool but if the five of clubs is there the that starbucks means inside here we have the Starbucks card, which is a pretty good trick, right? Yeah. But that's only a trick. Would you like to see a miracle? Yeah. Watch where it says Starbucks, because if I just rub, I can actually take that and I can change it from Starbucks clubs. into five, five of, clubs. of clubs, the card that you picked. And that is magic. So there you go. I mean, look, it is what it is. It's a great project. Luke is a really creative guy. I'm a big fan of his work. This is typical uh luke osland thinking um taking card gaffes and applying them to loyalty cards i think is an amazing idea i just personally think that luke could have spent a little bit more time on the explanations of yeah. the routines yeah. i think that would have been more beneficial to everybody concerned as it is he hasn't i'm going to give this 80 percent 85 percent i'm going to say it's worth buying absolutely i'm going to be carrying these around with me they are going to be part of my everyday carry but be prepared to do some creative thinking and think outside the box you're not going to get spoon fed the information you're going to basically get shown in the tutorial what each card is and then you're going to be left to your own devices as long as you're aware of that that's not a problem. Experienced magicians or people that are aware of some slight of hand with cards, you shouldn't have too much of an issue. What are you giving it? Well, I'm going to give the KFC 195. No, you've got to give it as a group, as a whole thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm like doing like three. Okay. Together, Starbucks and KFC. Okay. The KFC 95. Yep. Yeah. Um, and Starbucks 96. So together? Together is 100. Okay, 100. I, th I think they're really good. Um, I think they're well worth carrying around. Well Perth, putting into your everyday carry. Well Perth. Well Perth. <laughs> just be aware. Just be aware. Okay, all right. Just be aware that you are going to have to do a little bit of work and you're not going to get spoon-fed the information. Yeah. And that's another review show in the back. And that's another review show in the back. There we go. That is another review show in the bag. Are you ever going to grow out of that? I don't know. Probably not, right? Yeah, probably. Anyway, someday I think I'll be able to do like a, like a, oh, I forgot what it's called, cartwheel on top of your shoulders and then go to the other side. 
You what? <laughs> there is no way you're going to cart. <laughs> no, there is no way you're going to cartwheel onto my shoulders. Oh my god. Anyway, that is maybe one day. That is another review show in the bag. Thank you very much for watching the um the the, the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to be back again next Wednesday with another review show. If you want to uh, see more videos from Ryland, go check out the Kid Magician, Ryland the Kid Magician on YouTube. If you want to see more videos from me, obviously subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget leave a comment down below if you want to see more videos like this. No, I'm going to be subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Exactly, and I'm. I'm going to be back tomorrow, Thursday, with magic stuff at uh, 9 o'clock. 6 o'clock is going to be a magic live. 2 o'clock is going to be a short. And uh, are we going to go and build some Lego now? Yeah. We're going to go and build some Lego. We're going to build bye -bye. some Lego. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everyone.